Hey guys, and welcome to the VFX vlog, where you get to ask me filmmaking or visual effects related questions, and I will try my best to answer them. This is VFX vlog number seven, and today I'm first going to talk a little bit about some of the plugins that I think are really worth getting if you're into filmmaking and visual effects, and then I'm going to show you how to remove a moving object, for example, a person, from your video in Adobe After Effects. <laughs> Let's talk about plugins for filmmaking and visual effects. Now, there's a huge amount of plugins available and it might depend on your situation and what you're really looking for, but these are the ones that I personally use and I personally think are worth getting. One set of plugins that I really enjoy using is the Red Giant Magic Bullet Suite. The Magic Bullet Suite is actually a whole range of plugins, but the ones that I find myself using the most out of the suite are the ones for color correction and color grading. Especially Magic Bullet Looks is one plugin that I keep using a lot for color correction and color grading. Magic Bullet Looks basically allows you to set up a mini pipeline of how your video is being processed and you can set up different steps for adjusting the exposure, saturation colors, curves, contrasts, vignettes, all sorts of effects to get a really, really cinematic look in the end. Moving out of editing and color correction more towards the visual effects, one set of plugins I really love using are all the plugins that Video Copilot produces. They have a whole range of plugins, but I found myself using three in particular. The first one is Twitch. It's really great for adding those evil style of effects, like something's not right, it's twisted, or the video is distorted. I really like it. It's very easy to use, and I've used it actually for the intro and outro of this video. I've used it for a lot of text overlays. I've used it in the zombie VFX short film that we've done. It's a really great help, and I think it costs $50 or something, so it's really affordable, and I really love using it. The second one is Element 3D. Element 3D is a really, really cool plugin, and it makes it really easy to add 3D elements into your scene and composite them on top of your video. As you know, usually 3D effects either require you to do a full 3D integration, which can be very complicated and very tedious. Now with After Effects CC, where you've got the Cineware plugin, that's not as much of a deal anymore, but the Element 3D plugin just makes it really easy to add some 3D elements to your scene and animate them, move them around, and just integrate them with your footage really, really easily. I think Element 3D, if you include like the Pro Shader Pack or something, costs you $150 around about there. It's a really great plugin, it's easy to use, and if you don't have another 3D program where you can you know, build full 3D integration effects, it might be a really great tool for you. The third one is Optical Flares. Optical Flares allows you to add lens flares with a whole bunch of great presets and control them in your composition. You can add them to explosions, to lasers, to bright lights, to anything else, just to kind of stylize it and give it that intensity. Optical Flares looks really, really cool. It's super easy to use, and I think it costs $99 if I'm not mistaken. Definitely a plugin worth looking into. The last plugin that I would recommend is Trapcode Particular. Trapcode Particular is a really advanced particle system for Adobe After Effects, and it basically, you've got CC Particle World and CC Particle World 2 now in Adobe After Effects. They do work in most situations, but there are some cases where you just want a bit more intricate movement. You want a bit more control over how your particles behave, how they change size or color, how they're shaded, how they're being affected by physics, by wind, by turbulent noise, or anything else. CC Particle World is a little bit limited in that side, Trapcode Particular opens all those possibilities up for you, so I really enjoy using it, and I've actually been using it for a lot of the effects you see in my tutorials where, you know, I explode or something shatters and bits and pieces fly around. I usually end up using Trapcode Particular. Now let's finally get to the After Effects part of the tutorial, where I will quickly show you in Adobe After Effects how you can remove a moving object, for example, a person walking through your scene or a car or something else, how you can remove it from your scene. Okay, I have a very simple clip here in Adobe After Effects from my explosions tutorial actually, where I just kind of walk into the scene and then pretend to be hit by an explosion and I kind of tumble out of the scene. But you know, I'll just disregard my awful acting. I just want to show you how to basically remove myself from this clip in Adobe After Effects. The great thing about this one, and I'll show you the two scenarios. In this scenario, we do have one frame where I'm not at all in the shot, which is really great um, because it makes it really easy to trim myself out. Basically, what do we want to do? You want to duplicate this clip. You basically want to create a background plate, a clean plate where I'm not in the shot. So what we can do is you can disable the top one. I'm going to call this clean plate because it makes it nice and easy. And so now what we want to do is you'd actually want to freeze the time on that because you don't want me to walk into the clean plate. The clean plate should really just be an image or a shot of the scene without the elements you want to cut out in it. So select your layer, go to layer, time, freeze frame. So what this does, it freezes this frame of the video throughout the entire clip, and no matter how I scroll, it's just that single image. So now I'm going to enable my second layer again, and as always, I'm just going to be walking around. 
So basically what I want to do is I want to cut myself out. For that, you can use a simple mask. So click a pen tool, make sure your second layer is selected. I've covered that in another BFX block. If you're having problems creating mask, do check that out. And then all I want to do is I want to kind of draw a mask around myself. Actually, let's include a little bit of the ground because I do know I am casting a little bit of a shadow. Um, let's do just this point a little bit as well. Hmm, nothing really happened. But the reason that is because masks by default are additive rather than subtractive. So if you actually look at what we did, cut myself out and everything else gets discarded, which is not what we want. So just reveal the mask by pressing M on your keyboard and set the mask to subtract mode. Now I'm being cut out. And now if we enable the clean plate, which is just the empty image at the background, bam, I'm gone from the clip. Now, obviously one thing you'd want to do, you'd probably want to increase the mask feather to kind of blend it in a bit nicer because otherwise you might see harsh edges on the mask. Problem is right now, obviously the mask just covers a single area. Now, you could, in this particular case, you could make the mask bigger because nothing really moves around otherwise. But let's say it was a shot where you'd have to specifically only cut this actor out and there were other people that you didn't want to touch. What you do is you have to animate this mask to follow your actor around. In order to do that, I'm just gonna quickly set the mask to none so it doesn't actually cut anything out and we can see both the footage we're working with and the mask. And I'm going to animate the mask part. So what I will do is I will actually just very quickly, I'm probably gonna zip through this, kind of move these points around to follow me and cut me out. I'm just gonna do a fairly rough job of it. it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, let's kind of move that back as well. So now we've got the mask animated to follow me the, all the way through the clip. Uh, I can kind of see my hand poking out a little bit on that spot. Here, let's make that a bit bigger so we include my hand in it as well. And now if we set the mask back to subtract mode, bam, I'm gone from the clip. Now obviously this was very easy to have the clean plate itself because we did have a frame where I wasn't even in the shot whatsoever. But let me show you a very, very quick second scenario. Let's say you only had this clip where you don't actually have a single frame where I'm not in the shot and you'd still want to cut me out, but it'll be a little bit more tricky to create a clean plate, but it's not all that difficult. So basically what we want to do is I'm going to duplicate this once. I'm going to call this clean plate one. I'm just going to disable this layer and then I'm going to go to layer, time, freeze frame. So this is the first part of my clean plate. Obviously, I only want to use the right side because I am on the left side of the screen. So I'm just going to mask over that because that's all I want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this clip again. I'm going to call this clean plate two. I'm going to move to a time position where I'm on the right side about there. And again, I'm going to freeze that frame. Time, go to freeze frame. And on this one, I'm going to only include the left side in my mask. So basically what I have, I have two pieces of my clean plate. I've got one for the right side and I've got one for the left side. And if I enable both of them, I've got a nice clean plate at the back. And then it's exactly the same thing. All I want to do is, you know, cut myself out of that top layer, make sure I set the mask to subtract and then follow myself around as I need to. So that obviously, again, just like before, make sure that you're animating the mask to follow you around. But that's basically how you can remove a moving object, an actor, anything you really want from a video clip in Adobe After Effects. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. As always, any comments, questions or suggestions down in the section below on Facebook or on Twitter, I will get around to answering them. And if I think they apply to a whole bunch of people, I get the same question over and over from different people, I'm going to answer it in the VFX vlog itself. I'm going to show you in After Effects exactly what you need to do. So any questions, filmmaking, visual effects, gear, technical issues, throw them at me. I'll try my best to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, share the video around. It really helps out a lot for the channel. And as always, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.